Extend, again, not overdoing in the back or really pushing the abdomen forward, but just to create some space, you know, stretch here. Again, let the arms release back. Inhale again, coming up, firm the legs so we get that stretch to the legs. Exhale, release the arms, reaching up and down. Let's bring the feet a little bit closer together. And this time we'll open the arms out to the side. And then when we exhale, we'll come forward and bend the knees. You can let the arms hang a little bit, swing, and then repeat that a few times. Inhale, sweeping the arms up and exhale, releasing down. And again, inhale, reaching up and exhale. We can release down, just hanging here, knees bent a little bit, so from the side, knees are bent, just cascading down, you know, that rag doll feeling. Kind of feel vertebra by vertebra, some space coming in the spine, along the spine. You may begin to start to stretch and open up the backs of the legs. If you need, have blocks for your hands, you can catch the ankles or calves. Here to straighten the legs a little bit. And then we'll release, bend the knees, walk the hands up. We'll roll up to standing. And then just shake out the arms and legs there a little bit. From here, we'll now come down onto the mat. I would suggest maybe putting a blanket down on your mat just to make it softer. And then we'll use a bolster or a pillow. If you don't have a bolster or a large pillow, you could also take um, maybe three or four large blankets or towels. Okay. So if you didn't have a bolster or a large pillow, I'm taking these blankets and just folding them in half, stacking them so that they would resemble a bolster-like shape. Okay. So those would be the blanket stacked, which, you know, in some ways is similar height to the bolster. The density is a little different, but you get that idea. We're going to come and recline back into Supta Baddha Konasana. As we've kind of stretched open the chest, loosen the lungs, loosen through the hips, we'll come Supta Baddha Konasana, and then we'll come to sitting you may want to use a belt around the leg, so I'll show that option, and a blanket for the back of the head and neck. And if you know you're a little bit tight in the hips, when you open the legs out in this pose, you can have blocks to support the outer legs, or it can be really nice to have some blankets because they're softer. So those same blankets or towels, I'm just going to fold in half a couple of times. So that those will come to the outer legs in this reclined bound angle pose. With the belt, you want to, if you have a belt, you open the loop, you know, as wide as you can, the biggest diameter, and a lasso around yourself. Let that belt come to the lower back, the sacrum, so it's not up into the waist or the kidneys. It's down quite low near the hips. We bring the soles of the feet together. The belt comes to the inner legs and then around the feet. You take that tail of your belt and pull it towards you. Okay? So if you happen to have the buckle and it's to the other side, you have to pull the belt away from you you should slide the belt so that you can actually pull that tail towards you. Okay. Get that belt down nice and low in the back, again to the inner legs and around the outer edge of your feet. Bring the hands to the sides, remove the blankets for a moment, to the sides, move the tailbone towards the heels, Lift the chest so that as you slowly release back, you keep that length to the spine. Bring the blanket behind the head and neck. And then if that feels really intense on your legs, your groin, then you take those folded blankets 
And because we want this to be a bit more restorative, I would suggest um, you know, using some something to support the outer legs so that you can really allow the inner legs to release to the outer legs. Lift the hips and feel that flush. You might even take the hands, move the flush of the upper buttock towards the heels, the tailbone towards the heels. If you feel you could bring the feet in a little bit closer, you know, then you have that tail that you can easily pull on your belt to tighten the belt up. So we will take a few moments here to let the legs release, to move the shoulder blades in. So with the bolster, you have space now for the shoulders to release down, for that lift to come from the lower abdomen up, the base of the sternum up, and the chest to really expand. Think of it expanding upward and outwards with your breath. The spine, spinal muscles supported on your bolster, and then the arms releasing out to the sides. So though we want time to sit, it's good to prepare the body. Now take those 10, 15 minutes if you can to stretch to prepare the body for sitting. So it's hard to stay relaxed, centered when you feel strain or pain in your body. It gives the mind a chance to release as we bring a softness to the breath, a smooth evenness to the breath. I think of that, you know, saying that even keel, we really want to just feel that evenness and equanimity throughout the body, the breath, the mind. And this bound ankle pose could be a really nice um, pose to begin with because we're re releasing, relaxing in the abdomen, down into the pelvis, creating space. The spinal muscles can lengthen and relax. So that when we do come to sitting, you know, we feel that um, release, we have that shape, that length to the spine, the openness in the groin, the hips. And let the front throat release to the back, the lower jaw release. If you are feeling still a lot of tension in the forehead, and around the jaw. You could at this point, you know, just take the fingertips and just gently massage the forehead, the skin on the forehead, around the eyebrow. The temples. And then down into the jaw, really getting that hinge of your jaw. It's a place that we hold a lot of tension, which can, you know, strain even to the ears. And if we're trying to move the senses inward, if we're tight in the eardrums, the ear area, and it'll be hard to relax and release inward. So releasing the jaw, help relax the neck, behind the ears. And then we'll stay another minute or two just feeling the body, just surrender as it is. And the exhalation now deep into the abdomen. The inhalation, lifting and opening the chest. A clear pathway for our breath, a 
We're not holding any restrictions in our breath and breathing. Then from here, if it's all right for your neck and shoulders, we'll take the arms and extend the arms overhead and catch the elbows just to elongate through the sides a little more and open up the rib cage in the side body. And change that hold of the elbows. Really feel from the diaphragm that release into the abdomen on your exhalation. And then as we release the arms, you might take the hands and just gently bring the chin to the chest, re-engage the neck muscles, the elbows, hands to the floor, lifting from the chest to come up to sitting, and then remove your belt. Extend the legs, just bring the legs straight and take the belt off. Now before we come to sit, I just want to suggest that for anyone where if you feel sitting just becomes too much, at any time you could come back to you know, this pose, the legs extending. So I'm gonna bend them to start, releasing down. So you just come to a reclined but supported chest opener. You know, at any time, if sitting just becomes too much, you know, if you're fatigued and tired, feeling strain or pain, we can always come um, to a more reclined pose. From here, we will come to sitting. I'm going to suggest a, just a different way to sit this evening. You know, I just want to show a couple of options for those that are maybe new to of a seated practice, but I'll have one bolster to sit on, and that can be blocks or blanket stacked pillows. I'm going to bring a block at the wall here. I have a second bolster. I'm showing from this angle so that you can see. So this time, then we sit at the wall. We have the bolster behind. Sorry, I need to move that bottom one out a little bit. So yeah, last night we sat at the wall just with the back at the wall. Tonight we're sitting with the back into a bolster. So we still have that support, but we get that you know, movement of the shoulders, just like when we were reclined, but the shoulders can go back a little bit more. I do find it helpful, and this will vary from the length of your arm, to bring a folded blanket onto the top of the legs. I've tri-folded this blanket and then to rest the palms of the back of the hand on the blanket. Okay. So that's how I'll sit this evening. I will fit, sit facing the front again. So I have a block, bolster, second bolster, and that could be another pillow. And then a blanket for my lap. Okay. So really walk the sitting bones back. Move from the upper tip of the shoulder blade to the lower tip. So the shoulder blades move in. Feel that crease at the top of the thighs. You're bending at the top of the thigh. We're not bending at the waist. Okay. The sacrum moving in. The kidneys moving in and up. But those lower back ribs stay to the bolster. You can bring them the blanket to the top of your thighs. If you like, you can always use another blanket to support the shins. And really settle yourself, nestle yourself in as much as you need to feel stable, comfortable, yet able to keep the spine alert and lifting. Come back to how you felt when you were reclined 
In your bound angle pose, Supta Baddha Kadasana. The relaxation in the spinal muscles, even though they stayed long. Allow the interior spinal muscles to lift up the posterior and the back of the head down to release. The back of the arm from the shoulder to release into the elbow. The palms soft, the fingers and thumbs may curl a little bit. And if you like, you can, you know, bring thumb point your finger together Dana Mudra. We feel the front throw release back. The back of the ears release. And as you let go in the jaw, feel the difference in and around your ear. The inner ear. Take the next few moments to settle in. You can come to set that intention for your practice this evening. It helps you stay in the now. It's not a goal to attain at another date, at later time. Attention to be present. Follow the breath. To try and feel the sensation within the body. Not just think you know what it is, but really feel. Let these the first five minutes be a time where you maybe scan the body a little bit more. The legs relax, the arms, the shoulders move back and down, the throat soft, the jaw. That's almost similar to when you begin learning to drive a car. The mirrors you have to check. The shoulder check. All those things we have to think about become second nature after a time. But sometimes in that second nature, we kind of become unaware of our actions. So it's coming to that point where you're able to be present with that awareness. It doesn't become as tiring to stay with the breath, with the present moment as we practice. We're able to Come back to the breath to release and relax with less fidgeting. The 
If you feel at the beginning, you're shifting a lot. The mind's wandering away more often. I just know that that takes time, it takes practice. It's coming back to our mat. Following the breath. Feel that that five minutes, if you would like to make any adjustments, change the cross of the legs at all, please do so. And we come back to the breath. begin to know ourselves, recognize our tendencies and habits. And reflect on the mind and recognize when the mind is maybe spinning stories in a repetitive cycle. That we can We'll come back to our breath, to following the breath. Really try to feel and allow the mind to descend down to the heart so that we're not led by the mind, but from the heart. And it could be moment by moment that we have to keep bringing ourselves back to the breath. following the inhalation to the exhalation. I know this analogy may not you know, work for everyone, but when I feel the mind kind of taking me away and being carried away by those stories, the mind running, when I come to the breath, I try to almost envision within, if you have the eyes closed, kind of receding down, that you're driving down a road of a straight highway at night 
Just kind of seeing the path ahead with your headlights. You have to stay focused on that path. Maybe you're more of the passengers, that silent observer as you go down the path, the road. Thoughts, emotions, actions. They can be the cause of suffering or joy. That will shift sometimes moment to moment. Just knowing that change is always there. Each breath and even within each breath. to make any adjustments, changing again across of the legs, coming to lie down if you need, please do so. Continue to keep the spine as alert as you can without strain. The organs in the lower abdomen relaxed, the diaphragm. Even though the chest is lifted, you're not overexerting that lift. The book I'm reading is called In Love with the World. Rinpoche writes that we have a choice of where we place our awareness. Let the awareness come to the body when you need. sense organs, which really just report neutral information. It's our mind that places you know, likes and dislikes. We're trying to keep in that neutral state, not putting labels on anything.
renewal with each breath, the release with each exhalation. Each breath, we have that opportunity to renew and release. Make any adjustments you sit this next section before the next bell why don't you try and sit for seven minutes and then we'll come to shavasana after that seven minutes so if you feel you need, you know, change across of the shins. You adjust and align. The spine alert, do not overstraining. The mind the brain it is alert, but in a reflective way. Need that little bit of alertness, otherwise we become drowsy.
sit. And you bring your awareness to one, maybe one sound or one sensation. And just keep the awareness on that for the next four or five breaths. Notice the quality, the sound, sensation, how far it may spread to. It's the sound, how long you hear the sound. It's almost like you zoom in to that one thing for a few breaths. Slowly, like you're zooming out. Let that awareness spread and reach further outward. Here, when you feel ready, just slowly, the eyes don't even have to open that much, just enough that you can find your way onto your mat to Shavasana, like that blanket for the head and neck. Release down. If you have the two bolsters, you might want to bring one behind the back of the legs. Blanket to cover yourself. Keep the knees bent even on the floor just for a few breaths or even up onto the bolster for a few breaths. Lift the hips a couple of times just to release in the back the hips, you could even hug the thighs in towards the chest. Like roll a little bit from one side and then to the other. And then when you feel ready, extend the legs. Bring the other blank or sorry bolster or pillow 
to add a little bit of weight to the torso or the thighs. And let the whole being rest, body, breath, mind. Coolness to the nervous system. Helps us to be in that state of peacefulness. The quality where we can be still, silent, without the need to look outside of ourselves. entertainment or distractions, just being as we are, content as we are. Thank you here in your Shavasana, the end this evening, staying as long as you would like. Thank you. Much gratitude for joining me this evening, this practice to benefit ourselves.